Hey guys, the objectives of this video are to go through the buoyancy states and we're going to establish the stability of a body in a fluid. So just to clarify, because I don't think it was very clear in the uh, video where we derived the buoyancy force equation, uh, when we did so we were considering the forces on a rectangular prism of fluid within which was the body. Uh, now that we're considering the body alone, we can establish that the uh, buoyancy force upward is equal in magnitude to the weight of the body um, in the opposite direction. And that's due to equilibrium. So if we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction, that's Fb minus Wb equal to zero. We established that Fb was equal to rho F GVB, that's the volume of the body, and the weight is the density of the body times G times the volume of the body. So we can reduce that we down to um, rho F minus rho B GVB. If we take GVB onto the other side, uh, we can see that equilibrium is dependent on the difference between the density of the fluid and the body. So rho F minus rho B equals zero. So that's the um, difference between the two densities. So if rho F minus rho B was less than zero, there'd be a net force downward. So for the situation where rho F minus rho B was less than zero, or when rho F was less than rho B, there's a net force downwards, which means the body would sink. Uh, if rho F minus rho B was equal to zero, that would mean that rho F was the same as rho B, and the body is said to be neutrally buoyant. So that means uh, you, the, the body would uh, rise and sink uh, depending on what external forces you applied. But if you left it alone, it would just sit in the water at the same level. If rho F minus rho B was greater than zero, or rho F was greater than rho B, there'd be a net force upwards, which means that the body would float up until it reached the surface, at which point um, it would eject some of the body out of the fluid until it reached equilibrium. 